Hi, Charge Heads. I've got some really exciting news about the TBR Wedgie build. Now, some might know this build has been going on for a really long time. Are we there yet? No, we are not. Are we there yet? No! Gathering information, as some of you know, and also just making sure we get the right battery and motor. Motor's been a massive thing on this build and it's taken a really long time, but I think we've cracked it. But today I'm at Ralph's because we've had a delivery, a delivery of batteries, because I've ordered the batteries from a company called EV Breakers in Northern Ireland, uh, evbreakers.com, great company, any of that sort of stuff, motors, batteries, anything to do with EVs, go and see him, he's the man to speak to. Like I said, really excited about the motor. I found a used one, yes, a used motor, and I found one that's powerful, so I will go into detail on that next time. So we're now in the workshop and uh, we're here with Ralph. Hi Ralph, how are you doing? Good evening, how are you? Very well. Batteries have arrived, look at them. Look at these shiny examples. Beautiful. Oh, they're even numbered. Ralph, we've got 18 modules here from an MG ZS. Don't, don't touch them. You, you always make me nervous when you touch them. I don't even want to touch them, that's how, uh, yeah. They're only 22 volts. Okay, that's all right then. <laughs> Stop stroking them. But with regards to the voltage, so the whole pack, all 18, make up 400 volts, correct? Uh, uh, when it's fully charged, yes. Right. So um, the voltage we'll need for your car, because we're using a different motor. A motor that we're, uh, it's. Our exhibit. It's top secret, se top secret. Uh, but we're only running 350 volts for that particular motor. So we only need 16 of these, which is good. Yeah. Uh, because it's so space and there is no space in your car whatsoever. So None. Very important. None. Um, but it also saves a bit of weight. Uh, and it also means that we can use the best 16 out of these 18 modules. Excellent, excellent. Maybe maybe fit one of the spare ones in the trikey. Trikey! Oh, God. Yes, yes. <laughs> He's zipping up the road. Range of 200. Go on, yeah, sorry. Anyone? I digress. Red herring. I've come up with this really amazing plan. I'm so cunning, you could put a tail on it and call it a weasel. Okay. Uh, really amazing plan. Awesome. It does involve um, cutting up your car. But we can't, we're not allowed to cut up the car, oh, Ralph. Well, not cutting up your chassis. Ah, okay. Cutting up your body. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. Cool. So I'm going to cut out the parcel shelf. Well, uh, I could potentially live with that, yeah. So it's going to be where the boot lid is, it's going to be flat all the way into the back of the seats and all that. Right, right okay. Okay, um, so I'm not I'm not able to put my golf clubs up there or... You've got golf clubs? My own. If you play golf... <laughs> 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 oh! I should have yelled too! I'm not a golfer. Golfing. I, I can play though, oh. yeah. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Oh, sh... Okay. You just yeah. told everyone. Yes, I did, whoops. Both, okay. both viewers on the YouTube channel. Yes, all, all, all three of them. Mum, Dad. Yeah. My wife, um, no, she doesn't watch it actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put seven of these modules across where your parcel shelf used to be. Okay. And we're going to make uh, a heavy duty battery pack. Yep. So one of the important things is that the battery packs have to be strong enough so that when you crash the car, when, Thanks. Um, I've seen some of your footage. So, you know, when there's just a wreckage of twisted metal and carbon fiber and it's just all over the road. There's carbon battery. fiber in my car. The battery will be. <laughs> oh. The battery boxes will still be intact. Okay, great, great. And they're made of, going to be made of mild steel, I, I guess? So we can use a variety of different materials in there. Excellent. Um, now, the great thing about steel, uh, we use some high tensile steel, is it's very good for impact protection. Yes. Because you can give it a hell of a beating and it will twist a bit, and then when you hit the second um, car, as you're careering down the road, bouncing off the crash barriers, and yep. there's still strength left in it for yep. the second impact. So secondary impact's really good with steel. So we'll use a bit of that. Yep. Um, we'll uh, make the rest of the structure, we'll have some uh, aluminium plates underneath it, because we've got to get the cooling system in. Yep. So there'll be some aluminium bed plates in it. And we're going to make the whole shell either out of aluminium sheet or possibly carbon fibre depending on how much money I can extract from you. 
Right. So we're going to have seven of them across the parcel shelf. Now there's a space underneath there. Yep. Either side of the, the, the chassis. Yeah. Above the uh, trailing arms. Right. Um, where we can get another two modules on either side. So what we end up with is like a saddle tank. So we'll have two more modules underneath those and two modules underneath those. So our, our battery box will be that shape. Okay. How many batteries are going in the back then? So nine so batteries in the back. Nine in the back. Right. Uh, we've also got to get the cooling system in, the wiring, the interconnect. And the cooling's for the batteries and the motor? Uh, the, well, for the battery box, it's just for the battery. The motor's on a, a different cooling circuit. Right. And then in the front, what we can do is get another um, seven modules in. Okay. Um, and we'll have uh, two rows of three. Yep. One on top of the other, with one module on its side on the front of that. Okay. The bonnet comes up at an angle like that. So from a weight distribution point of view, it's, it's not going to be very TVR-esque in terms of weight distribution. It's, it's going to be more kind of uh, noble slash MR2 kind of weight distribution. I, I like your, yeah, that's, that's an optimistic way of looking at it. Oh, forever the optimist, uh, Ralph. And uh, the pessimist view? Um, it would be like driving a TVR with six bags of cement stuck onto the roof. Fantastic. Mm. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, well, let's see if we can mount the, uh, the uh, cement a little lower than the roof. That would be uh, ideal. Um, but yeah, okay. This, this all sounds very exciting. We've now got the batteries. People might actually get to see some things happening with the TVI instead of us just talking about cars and EVs and, and being disappointed and, and all these things that I'm sure people are a bit bored of by now. So, um, so, are you going to start, uh, you've tested all the batteries now, is that correct? Yeah, we tested them yesterday. Wonderful. So what's the next plan of action for these batteries? So now we've got these, because uh, we've seen diagrams of them. Yeah. Now we've actually got them, we can uh, make the, the CAD drawings a little bit more accurate. Excellent. Uh, we can start cutting up some metal work and start getting it in there. Cool. That'll be the phone ring. Is that Elon? Yeah. You've got some pipe in your hand. Yeah, so we've got to work out how to actually get coolant into the battery. So right. the battery's going to hang down into this area quite a lot. Yeah. So here's a space model that I made. Bit of CAD going on, yeah. Yeah, cardboard aided design. Lovely. So we're going to get most of the batteries above that, but we'll have two uh, other modules yeah. down here. Okay. So the battery box is going to come down to this sort of level. And what you're going to be cutting is essentially... This bit. That bit, okay. That bit of fiberglass there. Okay. This is quite an important part of the, the structure of the vehicle. So we have to remodel that on the inside to bring all that strength back. Because otherwise, yep. I mean, the body shell's floppy enough as it is. Thanks. So we're going to bring all that back. And Mr. I Mr. Think I'd like we, to use carbon fibre for that. We, we can't change the name from Wedgie to Mr. Floppy, wow. unfortunately. Oh. Well, could do. Yeah. It's got an E, double E at the end, potentially. <laughs> floppy. Floppy. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, so then what we're going to do is we're going to get aluminium plates along the bottom of the, the top row of the batteries and the bottom ones there, yep. all with little tiny pipes in that link up together and actually form a cooling system with pumps like this. Yep. Um, so we'll run this from the battery management system. That'll take the coolant from there and then that will run it all the way to the front to the radiator. Okay. To and, the batteries cool. and is there just going to be one, radi one radiator? So it kind of depends on which uh, type of system we go for. Yeah. But I'm kind of hoping that we can get the motor, the inverter and the charge controller running at the same temperature. Ideally, it'll be at the same temperature that we run the um, batteries at. Yeah. If we, it depends what sort of system you end up buying. Uh, but if we can't do that, then we can run two different radiators. They're only little radiators. Right. Uh, this, neither of the systems will get above 50 degrees C. Ideally, we'll never run the batteries above 40. We're trying to target sort of 20, 25 degrees C. Now, obviously on a hot day, that's very difficult to do. Well, from a cooling point of view, what I'm thinking now, because uh, you've given me the exciting news that a lot of the weight's gonna be more in the kind of mid, uh, kind yeah. of mid-engine style, uh, that maybe uh, getting on the track would be quite, quite a lot of fun because it should actually handle better than a TVR, theoretically. Theor theoretically. It's a possibility. <laughs> well, it, it's a possibility. 
Yeah. There's a number of things we need to sort out. For instance, the TV I've got this this trailing arm system. Yeah. Which, quite frankly, is rubbish. It's a little bit on the dog poop side, isn't it? So we can add a bracket onto there. Yeah. To start getting a bit more strength in, take some of the compliance out of that bush there, and that will stiffen that up a bit. Um, so we can improve it, but the geometry is that wheel camber angle moves a lot with bump. Right. So it's it's not the best design. Anymore. And of course the inboard brakes, uh, which are... Which are great for unsprung mass reduction. Okay. refinement. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make it special. We'll use a, a more modern, high efficiency radiator with closer fins. Yeah. And we'll run um, a series of little uh, coolant pumps like this. Yeah. Um, How sorry. many pumps would we need? Well, what I'd like to do is have one for the inverter motor system. Yeah. Uh, another one for the charge controller. Mm -hmm. uh, and another one for the battery pack. Right. Possibly two for the battery packs. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, depending on how we can run the coolant pipes. If you want an interior heater. I think that's important. There are two ways of doing it. I haven't got enough jumpers, I don't think so. We, yeah. we can run um, a high voltage, um, what we call a kettle in the industry, but a high voltage water heater yep. running through an interior heater, or we can run a low voltage heating element. Yeah. What we call a toaster in the industry. It'll be the same annoying. How do you doodly do? Which is a lower power thing, but you've only got a small cabin. Cabin, area. yeah. I, I must admit, I was thinking that whatever's going to be the most efficient, uh, I think efficiency is going to be a, a factor. On a cold day. Yeah, basically, because oh. I'm thinking heated seats in some, the seats in there, to be honest, because they'll I be more efficient, won't they? we run two 12 volt heater systems mm. as a demister. Yeah. That'll mean on the cold morning when you get to the track day and it's all exciting, you've had your cup of coffee and you've mm. got your string back driving gloves on. Yeah. You can demist your windows, your seat heaters on. Yeah. And you're out there enjoying yourself. And it puts the least loading on the high voltage battery. And it's also a lot lighter. Yes. I think light and efficiency are going to be quite key with this. Yeah. I was thinking uh, also, because obviously the body work needs doing something to make it maybe a little bit more wedge-like and streamline, potentially. Oh, yeah, great. yeah she's, she's a beaut. She's, she's been here a while, the amount of dust here, but yeah, cool. Long, no, no, cool, awesome. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this episode. Finally, some progress. I know that this, <laughs> this build has been going on and I really feel like things are moving massively forward in leaps and bounds, as you can tell, batches arrived. The motor has been ordered and I'll tell you all about which motor it is next time. Keep tuned.